I think modern society and social media puts a lot of pressure on people to, to look good, you know, to, to eat healthy, to, to generally be healthy, work out, go to the gym, to, to look young and vibrant and athletic. All of that takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, and potentially a lot of money. Oh, who the hell wants to faff with all that? Today, I'm going to share with you the secret way that you can get those results without actually having to do any of the work. Basically, you never go outside. You never see people face to face. You live entirely online. People will only ever see pictures of you and you edit the living hell out of those pictures. Okay, that might be a slight exaggeration, but I do want to share with you a few quick tips and tricks to enhance portrait photos. Not to excess, not go crazy, but just to just to refine them ever so slightly. Now, there is a lot of editing software these days that started to incorporate these features in automatically. Like a lot of my editing I do using Luminar. And there is an entire section in there about tools just specifically around enhancing people in photos. Body slimming, face slimming, face relighting, uh, removing bags under their eyes, removing imperfections in the skin, eye enhancement, and and it's literally nothing more than a few sliders or drop menus, and the, the software does the rest for you. Well, that's great if you've got the software, but it doesn't always work entirely accurately either. So today, I'm going to show you how to do some of these things by hand in Photoshop. Now, I know this might sound complicated, but it's actually not. But before I show you that, let me just take a second to tell you about Skillshare, who are sponsoring this video. If you're watching this video because you're wanting to learn new Photoshop skills, then Skillshare could be the ideal place for you to take things to the next level. I've personally learned many techniques for editing in Photoshop from classes on Skillshare like Zenji Gamma's class on matte painting compositing being my personal favourite. It has some incredibly advanced ways to create fantastic lighting effects from almost nothing, and the principles from that I've actually started to incorporate into editing portraits as well. And that's just one. There's over 900 classes currently available just on Photoshop alone, with thousands more on photography, graphic design, business management, marketing, and countless others. So why not check them out for yourself? And if you're one of the first 1,000 people to head over there via the link in the video description, then you'll bag yourself a one-month trial absolutely free. Obviously, the first thing I'm going to need is a picture to edit. Something that has examples of all of these different things in order for me to show you how to get rid of them. But I don't want to show pictures of, of all the people that I've taken where those issues are, because, well, that might offend people, so I, I need a different picture. Not the most flattering picture, I grant you, but it has got a lot in here to edit out. We've got the belly and, and the man boobs and a double chin and bags under the eyes and a wrinkly forehead and even a spot of balding just to top it off. So let's start with the balding. Now these are going to be quick refinements that are not going to make things absolutely perfect, they're just going to make them slightly less noticeable. With something like this, you could go crazy, you could use the, the clone stamp or the healing tool and pick off all the parts of the scalp and literally remap the entire bald patch. I'm not going to do that. The quick way to do it, to not completely overdo it, is to use the burn tool which is located on the left side. It's the a little icon that looks like a hand picking at something. And we're going to select mid-tones first, and we're going to have our exposure somewhere kind of around 15, 16%. And then I'm just going to do a couple of light brush strokes just over the top end of the scalp here. I'm not going to drop too far down. And then I'm going to go back up to the top, and I'm going to select shadows, and I'm going to do the same again. And all that's just going to do is darken the scalp area. So when you look now between original and edited, it's a lot less noticeable. Next, we're going to tackle the wrinkle lines across the forehead and the bags under the eyes. Both of these are done with the same thing, which be, is the brush tool. Now, the thing you have to remember with bits like this 
is these are essentially shadows that are caused by skin overlapping and casting a shadow over the next bit. If we were to stretch the skin out in real life, those lines would disappear, it would look flat. But obviously this is a picture, we can't just stretch the skin, so instead we have to get rid of the wrinkle lines that make it apparent. So the first thing we'll do is we'll set up our brush. So we'll get the size down to around 100 pixels, we'll get the hardness right the way down to zero, so very feathered edge for this and we'll bring both the opacity and the flow down to about 20%. So we don't want a thick blob of paint being thrown everywhere. We want it to be more like a delicate light airbrush that we've got to go over a few times just to give us a bit more control. And then speaking of a bit more control, what we'll also do for this is rather than painting straight onto the picture, we'll paint it on a layer above the picture instead. So we'll click down on the bottom right here where it says new layer. Now, obviously you have to bear in mind that the skin is different colors across my forehead. This side's quite green, this side's quite red. So we can't just paint one color across everything. It'll look wrong. So we'll use the eyedropper, hold alt, select a part of the skin. So we'll go for the middle of the forehead first, and then we'll just paint over the lines in the middle of the forehead. And then we'll reselect the color from one side of the forehead and we'll paint over the lines around that area and then repeat the process selecting the red side and paint over those lines. You can do the same with the eyes around here, select some of the, the, the lit skin from around the bottom and just paint over the bags and again on this side and you can even do the same on these lines around the nose where the skin's obviously sh shaded from the cheeks sticking out and just with those brush strokes, there you go. All those shadows are now nowhere near as harsh, nowhere near as noticeable. There's still hint of shadows there. You don't want to completely get rid of everything. There's still hints of wrinkles on the forehead. If you completely got rid of it, it will look more like an Instagram filter. And that's not what we're going for. We want to just enhance the picture slightly. We don't want to make it look like we've completely reworked it. But then there are occasions where rather than removing shadows and removing dark areas, we could actually add them in to help define and, and shape certain parts. For example, the chin line, especially if you're someone like me with, with facial hair, shadow under the chin can actually be beneficial. If you imagine, if you're taking a picture of someone and their neck's quite far back, not only can it create the double chin, but also it opens up the neck to have light cast under there. Generally, to get rid of, of double chins with people, you tell them to, to kind of push their chin out slightly to stretch the neck. But in doing that, it creates more of a shadow under the neckline as well. So I think we kind of subconsciously associate darker neck with, with that kind of chin out look. Plus, if you darken up under there, it can sort of help hide a double chin a little bit. Not always. If you look here on this side, for example, there's quite clear creases in the neck. We could do the same technique as before and just brush over those slightly just to make them less apparent. But then if we get the burn tool and we keep it on shadow and we just put a little bit of darkening on this side of, the, of my chin there, you can see it just helps kind of, rather than it looking like a, rather than it looking like quite a flat neckline there, it just makes it look more of a, of a prominent chin out and, and more of a creates more of a jawline essentially. But sometimes you might have, say, a double chin or skin sticking out that's just too much to just paint over. You need to physically remove it. And for this, we use the liquify tool, which is under filter and liquify, or if you're on Windows, you can press Shift, Control, and X. Now, for this, first thing I would say is don't have your pressure all the way up near 100 because with high pressure, it just makes everything go crazy. Much better have your pressure right the way down at say sort of around 10. So it's only a very light pressured liquify tool. That way it's moving much more gradually. And also you want quite a big brush for this. You don't want a small brush. If you try using a small brush, you're only pushing little bits at a time. It's more like poking areas of the skin in it'll be uneven. You'll have gaps in between. It'll just look very jagged and messy. You don't want that. So a reasonable size brush. And for this, I can just not only move the neck in on the sides to just 
squash it in a little bit. But more importantly, if you note where my beard line is, I've actually got like two lines of, of shadow coming here. This lower line that's hanging down is making my neck look fat, like it's hanging down. So we can just use the liquify tool there just to pull that in slightly. And we can even do it on where I've got a pointy nipple for some reason, we can rein that in. And also the belly, which would be the big one. So for this, again, just using the liquify tool, just pulling the belly in a little bit. We're not going crazy, we're not trying to go full six pack here. That is wishful thinking. But just a bit less than it was. Now, sometimes with the liquify tool, you might have something like an arm or something in the background of the picture that's also getting distorted as well. Don't worry about it. Move the bit of the body in that you want to. And then with the, the liquify tool again, just, just make it a little bit smaller and just use it to pull the affected areas of the background back out. So with this, we can pull the arm back out. Now, obviously, you could go to greater extents with that. If you've got someone who's more front on, you might want to tuck the, the waistline in a little bit more. But you can also use the liquify tool, not only make things smaller, but also make things appear bigger. Not that. But if you imagine if you had a, a, a guy front on, you could not only push the waistline in a little bit, but you could buff the chest up maybe. Or in this picture, for example, I've got the arm here with not a lot of muscle definition. So I could go back into the liquify tool and I could just ever so slightly just make my arm look a little bit bigger. Again, not going crazy. You don't want to look like Popeye, but just a little bit bigger. And, and you just want to target the areas which obviously if the worm or muscle would look bigger. So around the forearm, around the, uh, the bicep, not just the whole thing. However, it's important when you do stuff like this to bear in mind the, what the lighting effect would be, which if I had more muscle, the, the arm would actually be a lot rounder. So when the light's shining on it, it would actually start to cast more shadow around the edges, not look quite so flat like this. So we can go back to the techniques we used earlier. So the burn tool, for example, and we could switch to the mid-tones and just put a slight hint of shading on the edges of the arm. Only subtle, you probably wouldn't even notice that difference that I just made there, but if you switch back between the two, you can now see that darker edges, brighter in the middle, it naturally looks more rounded, more three-dimensional. So, okay, not the most flattering picture to be left with by the end, but better than it was at the start. Obviously, that was a very extreme example. In reality, you would never accept an original picture like that and try and salvage it. But these techniques you can use to more general photos to just enhance them that little bit more. Again, you don't want to go nuts. You don't want people looking at a picture and thinking, wow, that's been photoshopped. You don't want every single imperfection in the skin to be completely obliterated because it just looks like a filter. So that is going to wrap things up for this video. As always, if you have any questions or queries, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. While you're down there, if you enjoyed this video or you found it helpful and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe button and then hopefully we'll see you in the next video.